Now this is a video that I've been wanting to do for a long time about reading a schematic and not so much the actual schematic reading but trying to figure out where the parts are on the schematic and connecting them to the radio. Now the first thing I want to do is discuss a little bit about a schematic and how do you read one and uh, or at least some methodical way of reading them. Most schematics are wrote so that they read like a book. They'll read from the left to your right and from top to bottom. And generally the way they're wrote, they start with the front end or the input end of the radio, starting with the antenna and working their way through the mixer tube and oscillator circuits through the IFs detector and first audio to the final output audio and speaker usually located down in the bottom or lower ends of the schematic will be like the power supply circuitry now when you get a schematic, now this is a SAMS because um, the radio that's that is for this particular radio, uh, I had a SAMS manual for. Uh, a lot of writers schematics, and I have ran into some scam, SAMS uh, photo facts, but a lot of them may not have the tube numbers on. And without a tube numbers it makes it real difficult to relate this to the radio so the first thing you ever want to do is get your tube numbers now I'll put in the description at least uh, maybe one or two sites that you can go to and download uh, your tube manuals if you don't have them uh, they also have, uh, one of the sites also has some other books on learning about radios, um, dealing with anywhere from simple to very complex high math engineering books. And they're all free to download. But you get your tube numbers on, get them marked out, and if, and I have had schematics like this, if they do not have part values, such as like 10k resistor, 2.2 meg resistor, 0.05 capacitor, so forth. If they don't, um, with the schematic, they'll have a parts listing most likely that you probably downloaded. Get those on there so it's a lot easier. You don't have to keep walk, moving back and forth between pages of trying to figure out, okay, that's number 32. What value resistor is that? Now, one thing you might want to do, and what I usually do, is I locate certain parts. We know the tube sockets. We get them pin numbered out. We can locate those in our radio. And the way these relate, there will be a key. Uh, these sockets happen to be Loctal. And Loctal sockets are like this they actually lock into place there's a key right here that locks them into place that's why they call them lock tools. but they have on them a keyway whether it's a lock tool socket there's a key right here sorry I'm not getting this one today. Um, right there if it's an octal the key will be this plastic keyway. When you're reading pin numbers, you locate the uh, where the key is, which happens to be right there. The first one that is just to the left of that keyway is pin 1, and then you read them clockwise. So it'll be pin 1, pin 2, pin 3, pin 4, and so on. 
Now some octal sockets I've ran into actually has the numbers molded into the Bakelite socket, but not all. So don't always hold that as a, a truth. Once you understand how to do that, you got that, you got the numbers here, you can start finding out what parts hook to them. Another thing to find is things like this band switch. Since this is a two band radio, it has a band switch. And what you do with that is you come down here and you relate it out and you find the band switches and you find how they're numbered and stuff. And one of the easiest things to do, um, some schematics will actually show a physical drawing of the band switch, usually from the back and list how they're numbered. This SAMS does not, so what you want to do is start locating things that you know, like the antenna. You find it, you, you know where it's at. Um, I've disconnected this one from this radio, but if you follow it down, you see that it goes here, which is pin number four, and that actually relates out to this point here. That also has connection down to a spot right down in here which is the shortwave antenna as well as an external antenna um, connection it was a plug so that's what this is right here now you can find this one which comes up here it hooks to a coil and it hooks here it also hooks down to this connection down in here comes up hooks here onto this coil and comes up here so that's five and then this one right here which goes right down this one right here goes down to this trimmer cap and also goes to a coil that's buried back here that's pin number three which is right here and there's that coil and cap now by knowing that then you know that that's pin three pin 4, pin 5, so they're going in a counterclockwise direction from that point, this is pin 6, 7, and so on, which will relate on the schematic to different points. There's pin 6, there's 7, 8, 9, and so on. And you can start following these wires out and finding these locations. So once you find these switches, as well as your on-off, and base control, which Philco is notorious for doing. The volume controls up on top of the radio. If you locate those and you can locate them, this is the volume control, this is the base or tone control, here's the power switch. You find these different components that's in the radio and you can relate them to the schematic. Then you can start making your connections. You can make connections to each point and to the tubes. You can locate parts and stuff. Now one other thing you can do is some schematics, Sam's real good about having them, will have this, which is a parts locator. And it'll show a good, it's an actual real picture of the radio. Now there's one thing missing in this radio because it wasn't even, it has been replaced a couple, three times, and that's the filter capacitor, which is, wasn't done right. I already cut it out. But the filter capacitor is right here. But you can find these parts, and they correlate to numbers here, which then in turn correlate to numbers on the schematic, such as 34. 33, number 7 for your filter caps, and so on. Another thing too is SAMS will have an upper view of the radio. This is primarily, part of this is used for um, showing you where all your trimmers are so that when you do alignment of the radio, but it also shows the tubes and where they're located at. Each one has a part number to it. And those will relate in the parts listing right here and tell you which what the tube is. And that way you'll know where the tubes are.
and of course you'll have your alignment instructions. But back to this, once you know where the tubes are, you know what the pin numbers are, you know where your major components are like switches and stuff like that. Other things such as coils and stuff, they're easy to spot and they're easy to spot down here on the schematic. You find those and then from that point you can start breaking it down. Uh, the nice thing about Philco and some other radios is they have, if they have the original caps in them, they'll have part numbers on them. And those part numbers will correlate to numbers in the parts listing. So then you can look up this part number, find out what it is, and then you can find out where it's located on the schematic. Now that's not always going to happen for you, such as this. This little capacitor right here is not a Philco. Now one other thing I want to talk about, and like I say, this may have to be a two-part. I'm running long on time, but I want to touch real quickly. Until you're really comfortable with what's here compared to what's here, if you have to replace anything, parts, whatever, if you have to move parts, take more pictures, always take pictures, take pictures of the top, take pictures of the bottom, take pictures of different angles, go this way, go this way, go up like this, try to get every angle you can, but there's going to be stuff in the way, this part right here is in the way, well, come right in here and snip it, one end only, take your pointer, Take a picture of it where you snipped it. Now you can move it out of the way and see what's underneath. There's a 2.2 meg resistor right there. I wouldn't have known it was there until I moved that out of the way. Now I can test that resistor and make sure it's okay. But by keeping it hooked in there, it always will still be there. This wire's standing out, this wire's standing out. I took a picture when I cut it to know where it hooked. Keep these things together. If you're going to replace a wire, say you're going to replace this wire, cut it right in the middle, somewhere in the middle, so you have a long lead and a long lead, okay? And you're probably thinking, that didn't look like a bad wire. Is he going to restore this radio? It's okay. I got plenty of wire. But then, with this out of the way, I can pinpoint where that goes, right there. I pinpoint that. This end actually goes to the speaker. And all I've got to do is now I'll get my length of wire that I need measured out from here to here. I can take this loose now with that wire already stripped and ready to go. Desolder this, solder the new wire in here. Now stick it through and follow where this one goes. Desolder that end and stick it on there. Now I'm pretty darn sure that I got that wire in the right place. Same with the capacitor. I know it, it hooked here. I'll go ahead and solder that end on with my new capacitor when I get ready to place it. Then I can cut this in and solder that end on. This is a way of doing things so you don't get lost. You'll still make mistakes. We all still make mistakes. We're only human. I've been doing this for 40 years. and I'm even formally trained. I went to college. Um, so, you know, I still do this. I still have to take pictures. I still make mistakes. You know, I'll go in part two on why we want to take pictures even when we know how radio is built and how it's designed, how it operates. And uh, one other thing for future videos is I'm going to probably go through some theory and stuff because I believe that anytime you're going to work on something, whether it's for a hobby or, or livelihood, it is good to know how it operates. At least some general theory because that way you can, it's easier to troubleshoot. So until later, and if you have any questions, write them in there, check in the comments, and for those who don't know how to read the color codes on capacitors, I think I'll go ahead and put a phenolic, what they call phenolic, into the description too, of one way of being able to read these. So until the next video.